Christ Church, good morning friends. It's a, another wonderful opportunity to be here this morning and we we'll pray that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us. I pray that this message will bring about transformation to our lives and it will not just be an information. This morning, the title for the message is um, Prayers That Gets Results. Prayers That Gets Results. And I'll take the text from Philippians chapter 4 and I'll read from verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Also, I'll be reading 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'll be reading 17 and 18. 17. Pray without season. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. Being able to pray is one of the most important things that could happen to us believers. Being able to pray is a lifeline that we have that gives us the opportunity to commune with our God, to commune with the maker of heaven and earth, the one who created everything, being able to discuss with him, to commune with him, to relate with him. Our prayer life could easily be a yastic of measuring our relationship with God if we are sincere. However, this is not always the case. When Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, knowing that, knowing that we also have a Father on earth, so he was trying to describe the relationship that exists between our Father here on earth as compared to our Father who was in heaven. He was teaching them, you start, you are relating with the Father and you look at that Father based on the relationship we have with him. Every child must trust his Father that the Father can make things to happen for them. Every child has a relationship with their Father knowing that they stay at home, they stay together, they relate, they commune together. So it's very, very important when we talk about prayer that we take cognizance of the relationship that exists, that we don't just begin to pray because we needed to pray. God values the relationship between him and the people praying far more than the prayers they pray. Remember the prodigal son. When he left home, there was nothing for him. Yes, his father had everything. But he was unable to access any of his father's wealth. Even though his father has everything he needed, it was not in his disposal. Because the communication between him and his father was completely broken. Our father in, who is in heaven, though has everything, but until our relationship between him and us, that's the only time until our relationship between the relationship that exists between we and our Father is so secured. Is it that's what qualifies us to receive anything from Him? If we do not have a solid relationship with the Father, then we are not really qualified to receive from Him. Our relationship with God is the key to the answers of our prayers. Our relationship with Him. If we have a solid relationship with him, on the back of that relationship lies every other thing that we do. In Matthew, chapter, in Matthew 17, in verse 19 to 21, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And Jesus answered them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Verse 21, however, this kind does not go except through prayer and fasting. Jesus was telling them, the first thing you need, you need to act in faith. Even if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you can still move mountains. And the second thing Jesus said was that you need to pray and you need to fast. He said, this type of things do not go except through prayer and fasting. Folks, I want to tell you, fasting coupled with prayer has to do with relationship. 
Yes, we all pray. But when Jesus was talking about fasting, he was referring to the relationship that exists. And I'll bring that out to you. Fasting is all about relationship. Fasting increases our focus with God. Fasting redirects our thoughts. It gives us access to God. It aligns our ways to God. Fasting weakens our flesh and empowers the Spirit of God. And, be, and without the spirit being empowered, we cannot commune with a spiritual God. The Bible says God is a spirit. And if we will worship him, we will worship him in spirit and in truth. One of the things that fasting does, it allows us to be able to have an undented relationship with God. So that we will be able to access God. It fasting weakens our flesh and empowers our spirit. We should not be making demands on anyone if we don't have a solid relationship with him, including God. God values the relationship that exists between both of us, that exists between we and me. And in most cases, we don't, you know, when we don't even have relationship, we just go ahead and, 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 and make demands. And no wonder some of our prayers are not being answered. And that's why we need to focus on the relationship that exists between us and God. I personally feel bad making demands on people that I don't have a good relationship with. And, 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 and we should all view God in this way. You don't have a really good relationship with someone. Why do you want to place demand on them? Before we go to God, we need to have this relationship. And that's one of the key things that helps us. In our relation, in, in, in our prayer life, Jesus told the disciples, this thing do not go except through prayer and fasting. Fasting has to do with bringing ourselves, aligning us with God, having us, giving us the grace to have a great relationship with him. Also in Matthew chapter 9, and I'll read from verse 14 and 15. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? <laughs> what a question. And Jesus said to them, Can the friend of a bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will fast. You see, what Jesus was saying is, My disciples already have access to me. They don't need to fast. They are with me all the time. The reason why you fast is to be able to be, your spirit to be empowered so that you will have access to God. My disciples are with me. They talk to me. They share their problems with me. And I respond and relate with them. We eat together. We wine together. There is no need. There is no need for them to fast. But when I am no more with them, they will have to do what it takes to be able to access me, and they will have to do it through prayer and through fasting. Fasting, praying is a demand, but fasting secures the relationship. The relationship that exists between God and man is one of the most important things that brings about results to our prayers. So important. It's a priority, the relationship we have. We, we, we know this one part of the scripture that says, can two walk together except they agree? It's absolutely, it's not possible. Until they walk together, there will be no agreement. So also with God, we, don't, we, we can take God for a ride. Yes, everybody prays, everybody, but you understand, beyond the prayer, there should be a relationship that exists with us. An intimate relationship. An intimate relationship that binds us together. And I want to tell us, our attendance in church does not indicate an intimate relationship with God. However, it can help us build a relationship with God. But it does not indicate we have an intimate relationship with God. And our attendance does not indicate that. What indicates what indicates an intimate relationship with God is our ability to commune and to talk to one another from time to time. 
God should, our prayer life should not just be th that add-on, that addition that comes up when we think we have a need or when we think we have a challenge or we think there is a God who can sort things out. That's not God. God wants someone who will continue to commune with him, to relate with him at all times. That's what he wants. He wants, he desires our relationship. He de desires that heartfelt relationship where the heart meets, where we yearn and we test for God all the time. You know, first time we all fell in love, we all know what it was like. We, 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 we just... We just desire that opportunity to keep talking to one another and how sweet it was. We, 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 just, we just want to continue talking to one another morning, afternoon, whatever time of the day. And, and, and I want to tell you something. For every relationship where there is no communication, where there is no, there is no opportunity to talk together frequently, I can tell you something. That relationship is gradually dying off. I mean, that's the first indication that this relationship is not working. Be it marriage, be it whatever relationship. It tells you that gradually things are dying off. In the same vein with God, if we don't create an opportunity where we have a relationship to talk to God from time to time. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Where we talk to him, we sit down, we relax, and we allow him to speak to us back. We desire going to God and waiting with an expectant heart to receive from him. <laughs> so communication is so it is so it's so important in any relationship. They say communication is important in every relationship. Fair enough, good. But I want to tell you. Communication is the lifeline of every relationship. If there is no communication, that relationship is on a downward slope. So also in our relationship with God, how often do we talk to God? How often do we seek and pant after God? How often do we desire God? In terms of relationship, in terms of thanksgiving, in terms of praise, in terms of just, just, just worshiping and just, just relaxing in His presence. How often? That is what builds the relationship. If I don't have a relationship with you and you want to access something from me, I'm telling you, it looks, it, it looks like fraud because there is nothing that exists between us. The best people that will get the best from you are the people that have relationship. You don't just go on the street and someone say, hey, come here, can I get that, uh, can I get 10 pounds, can I get 20 pounds from you? You just, what the hell are you talking about? The relationship that exists between us and God, that is one of the key things that actually brings us to the place of God responding with us in prayer. You see, because God has the potential to answer our prayer, because he has the potential, doesn't mean he's going to answer. <laughs> Yes, we all know God has the power. He has the strength to answer our prayers. But that does not mean he has. That doesn't mean he's going to answer. You see, we, we, we must always relate with God knowing that, you see. God is the all-knowing. He's the all-powerful who can do everything. But you know what? We also have, need to have a relationship with him. Like I said, I personally, for people that knows me, <laughs> Listen, I can talk, and, and I know I can talk, but you know what? I, I, I take time, I talk with people I have a relationship with. If, if I don't have a solid relationship with you, I can be with you all day without opening my mouth, and you start wondering, has it, has it got a, a double personality or something? Yes, because why do I have to respond to you? If there is no relationship, why do I have to respond to you? If you think I've got a double personality, then you are saying God has a double personality. Somebody could go before God. In a few minutes, talk to the Almighty God and the Lord is responding. And someone else could also go to God. Talking to God for one year, two years, and there is no response. Because God has the potential to answer, does not mean he will always answer. To answer and to respond should be based on relationships. The earlier we understand that our relationship with God has a very, very pivotal role in God's responding to us, the quicker we get the results 
when we talk to God. Someone can go to God and receive. Yes, yes. But we also must understand that even though we can receive from God, God might not or will not always, all the time, you know, respond. He has the potential, but he might not. Because, you see, he has, he has, he has, he's, he has the way he does his things. But see, if you have a relationship with God, just like the, the, the Jesus answered, and, and he said, these guys are with me, they don't need to fast. The disciples of Jesus can approach Jesus and ask him for whatever they want at any time. Yes, they can. At any time they can ask him. Because why? They are always together. How often do we stay with God? How often do we fellowship with God? How often do we spend time with God? Not just in time to pray. Not just in time to ask. Not just because we want to receive. But how often do we just sit in his presence just to worship with him and just to exalt him? It's so important. I think there's a food for thought. I think there's a question we all need to answer because our relationship has all to do when it comes to God responding to us. You see, <laughs> some men still don't understand why or how a married man could be charged for, for, for raping his wife. Well, even though you have a potential to lay with her, it is her right to say no. It is her right to know. I, I know some of us might start thinking, then the Bible says the body of the woman belongs to the man and the body of the man belongs to the woman. Yes, I hear you. But you see, this same scripture also tells us that a woman is a wicked vessel. The same scripture makes us to understand we need to love her. We need to nurture her. If, if, if there is no relationship between both of you, you don't have, even though you have, you, you, even though you are entitled to something, you might not get it. And, and, and such is life. We, 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 we can argue from today to whenever. The right, our right in life, should be based on relationship. We have no, it, it, it's only a privilege and we have no right whatsoever, even before God. And the relationship we cultivate with people always brings things to us, always allow them to respond to us. And the same with God. I want to tell you something. Attitude and relationship is everything. The attitude in relationship is everything. Yes, we are Christian. Yes, we go to church. But I'm telling you, that does not indicate the strength of our relationship with God. It does not indicate our intimacy with God. It does not. Our relationship with Him is based on the time we spend with Him. It's based on the times we talk to Him. It's based on the times we just want to we just we, we, we just we just want to relax in his presence. And that's what relationship, every good relationship does. In every good relationship, they just have time to fellowship together, just to relax, to talk, to chat. And they don't even know what they're chatting about. They just keep chatting. That's the strength of a good relationship. And the same is applicable to God. In relationship with God, it's 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 a dialogue. Where you just talk to the Lord, you just say something sweet to Him, and the Lord speaks to us back. And it's not just all oh, this rush in and rush out in the name of request, and He's just there as someone that once we need Him, we will always be there. I want to tell you something every relationship must be treasured, every relationship must be valued if we want to get the best from it. If we treasure God, if we treasure the relationship, then we will always spend time in that relationship. And the more we spend time, the more we get the best from that relationship. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, he said, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. If we value it, our heart will be there. If we truly value God, our heart will always be there. Not just when we are in church, not when we are doing prayer meetings, 
not when we are doing Sunday school, but every time, every day. We will do nothing, we will take no actions until we commune with Him. It's all about relationship. Where whatever we value, we will, our heart will always be there. If we truly value God, our heart will always be there. Our hearts must be there, not just our mouths. We could say good things. We could vocalize good stuff. But I'm telling you, it's not just about what we say. It's about what resides within us. It's about what is in our heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. <laughs> out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart? That's what speaks. If anything other than that, then it's fraud. And if what exists in our heart is a solid relationship that pants after God, then our relationship with Him must be solid. And I'm telling you, our response, our, our response to, to the prayer and our communion with Him, I'm telling you, we will always hear Him. We will always receive from Him. And, 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 and that makes the relationship to be sweet. It's a two-way thing. It's a two-way thing. God was teaching the people. He said, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven. He's trying to relate our relationship of our Father who's on earth. We all have, we all have relationship with our fathers. We sit with our fathers. We whine, we dine, we relax. We chat, we talk all the time. Our kids talk to us. And he talks and we talk back to them. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ was just trying to, to exemplify. He said, he started, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Yes. He is in heaven. Also, looking at our example of Father who is on earth as well. It's important the relationship we have with God is the key to the answers of our prayers. Not just praying in faith. We can pray in faith. We can have faith as small as most see and try to push away the mountain. But I'm telling you, apart from faith, yes, we've had a lot of our faith. But apart from faith, it's also important that we have a solid relationship with God. So, 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 so important. You see, God wants our prayer life to be based on relationship and not just the words of our mouths. So people can pray and pray, but God is silent because it's just words of mouth and not a heartfelt prayer that is based on relationship. A heartfelt prayer that is based on relationship. So that we don't just talk, 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 talk. It's not words of mouth. It's the words that emanates from our heart based on relationship. However, when our heart is with God, when an intimate relationship has been formed, the response to our prayer, they come so quick, so quick. Just like we read earlier on in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. It means let's continue to talk to one another. Let's continue to discuss with God. Let's continue to commune with God. Let's create time for one another. <laughs> prayer is simply a conversation between man and God praying without season you jump into your car you say God direct me you are eating you say God lead and just just help me everything you do you wake in the middle of the night you say Lord what's the next thing what do you have anything you want me to hear from you there is this constant communion with him we create time a time in the day that is set apart for God Praying without ceasing all the time. Our heart keeps panting after the Lord. And that's, that, that, that's what brings about answers to our prayer. It's not just thinking about it. Oh, I have this request. I will just dash to him. Oh, I have this. I needed this to be done. I will just, just like, just like uh, our, our helpmate that is just there. And each time we need him, we just, we just call on to him. Will you please do this? Will you please do that? God wants to be part of our life. He wants to be part of everything we do. And it's relationship. 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 
a continuous relationship between man and God can only exist where there is a heartfelt, 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 not mouthfelt, heartfelt. And I pray that our heart will be sold out to God. In Psalm 22, if we read Psalm 22, I, I don't have time to read it. We will see how David expressed his fear to the Lord. And he also proclaimed his love to God. In verse 20, in verse 20 to be precise, he said, Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling. From the power of the from the power of the God, of the dog. Imagine David said, Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling. There is a relationship that exists between David and God before he can say, My darling. No wonder the Lord said, called David and said, the man after my own heart. The one after my own heart. In Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. And I read, it, the Bible talks about the psalm. It talks about David. It said, as, as a deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. The heart just keep panting. Just keep panting. Just like you. You see, it, the deer needs water to survive. So, so it's talking about something that we cannot do without. It's just, just keep panting after God all the time. Keep panting after God because our survival depends on God. And as we keep panting after Him, day in, day out, morning, afternoon, night, we keep panting after Him. That's the relationship we are talking about. That's the relationship we are talking about. Verse 2, He said, My soul test for thee. Oh God, for the living God, when shall I come and appear before you? Say, my toe, my soul tests for you. My soul tests for the living God. He said, when shall I come and appear before you? I mean, listen, we all need to create a time set apart to appear before God. He's not talking about when will I come and appear before you, maybe when it comes to heaven, or what we're thinking about. The time of the day, when do you appear before God? When is that time set apart between you and God? When is that time? He said, when shall I come and appear before you? A time of the day that, is, that exists just for you and for God, nothing else. A time where you fellowship together. Where you spend time together. And, I, and, I, and as I was looking at the scripture, and I felt maybe we might even we might even have a challenge of appearing before God. Where we all know, even if it's 30 minutes in the day, let's set time just to appear before God. We're not talking about we're not talking about making requests just to appear before God. It might be 12 midnight, it might be 12, 12 noon, just, just for 30 minutes. Just appear before God and just rest and relax in his presence. Where you, 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 you begin to build a solid relationship with him. A time between just for you and for God. Well, every telephone, social media, whatever, completely put off. It would not kill you. Just for 30 minutes, spend time. Set it apart. A time for you and the maker of heaven and earth. Who can do all things. Who has every power within his disposal. That will be awesome. I can assure you. If we put that into practice, just for one moment, appearing before God, just to fellowship with Him, just to tell Him how great He is, just to tell Him how faithful He is, just to thank Him for all the things, all the numerous things He has done, just to, just to thank Him. I'm telling you, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. He knows our needs and our requests anyway. <laughs> he knows them. That would be awesome. I think, I think it's something we need to work on. Appearing before God. Creating a time in the day. Just, just, just put a break on life. And stop rushing here. And create a time to appear before God. 30 minutes. 15 minutes. 10 minutes. Whatever is happening. You know I have, a, I have an appointment to appear before God. How sweet will that be? How sweet. A time to appear before God. In Revelation chapter 3, and I'll read verse 8. You know, <laughs> this is in Revelations, and, and it has to tie down with 
with some of the things that we have been doing in the church in our Sunday school in the, in the last few, I think in the last few weeks or so. He said, I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a very little, very little strength. Have kept my word and have not denied my name. He said, they have little strength. What does it mean to have little strength? Little strength means I cannot do it my, on my own. Little strength means I have no power. And for people that have no little strength, where do they go? They keep going to the Lord Almighty God. They keep going to God in prayer. They go to God in prayer and keep saying, I, I am weak. I have no strength. It's only the feeble and the weak that goes before the Lord continuously because they know they have no strength. Unfortunately, that's what God wants. He wants people to know that our dependence rests on Him. Everything. If God will ever use you in any way to accomplish anything, then you must be able to acknowledge that I have little strength. I have little strength. The people that go before God continuously, seeking for solutions and just worshipping Him and just relying on Him, is because they have come to understand that I have little strength. I cannot depend on myself. My dependency should be on God. There is nothing of my own very self. We keep going to Him, asking for direction in everything that we do going back and forward, making requests on him. It's only humble and people that, you see, humility is relying on God. Humility is reminding God that Lord, you are the one who can do everything. Because I have little strength, as we depend on him, the Lord begins, begins to replace our strength with his own ability. And that's why you see, People with little strength doing great things. In Revelation chapter 3, the Lord was so pleased with them, even though they said they had little strength. Why? They had little strength, but because their dependency was solely heavily on God. For the man or the woman that acknowledge they have little strength, where do they run to? They run to God. They cannot depend on themselves. They spend much time depending on God, so that God can replace their weakness with his strength. Proud people, strong people, energetic people, God looks at them from afar. Because when you are too strong, you are too noble, you can do everything on your own. You don't relate with him, you have no relationship with him. You just do your thing the way you want to do. You are so intelligent. The Lord looks at you from afar. He just, he just looks at you from afar. The Bible says he, he looks at the proud from where? From afar. But for the humble, he just, he just, he just, he just, he just, he just, he just allowed them to inherit. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. The Bible says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the humble. For they shall inherit the earth. The more you become meek, the more you depend on God in everything, the more you inherit more. No matter how weak you are. As long as you keep depending on God and going back and forward to just telling him that I can't do nothing of myself. Every power belongs to you. You depend on God. You pants after him. Just as the deer pants after water. Because it is the water that gives the deer survival. Just as you pant after the Lord because you keep telling him my survival <laughs> depends on you. And, 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 and you see, he said, the meek shall what shall inherit the earth. The more meek we are, and as we run to him, I'm telling you, we will inherit the earth. Amen. The people with little strength will always inherit. Also in our marriages. In our marriage is so important. The relationship we keep in our marriages. A man 
must have little strength to understand that I need to tap into the strength of my wife. A woman must always have little strength to say, you know what, I need to also always tap into the strength of my husband. In places where marriage, where relationship don't go well, somebody is claiming authority and saying, I'm in charge, I know everything. I can do things on my own. The husband does things without telling the wife. Or the wife just go ahead and do whatever thing without no recognition of no cognizance of the host, of the existence of the husband. It wouldn't work. What you are saying is I have so much strength. No relationship is built on I've got all the strength. Talk less of we Christians. As for we believers, in our relationship with God, we must always go to Him with that heart of humility. With a heart of meekness that I depend on you. And the more we do it continuously, the more we do it all the time, the more we build that solid relationship that makes things to happen in our life. That makes things to happen in our lives. And I pray the Lord will help us. Two shall become one. In marriages, two shall become one. We must become one. We must commune together. Our relationship should be based on what? On communication. Talking to one another. If we fail, if that line of communication breaks down, everything is finished. I know some, 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 some of us have been careless and the line of communication has broken. And, I, I, and when that happens, it's finished. When there is, we, should, we should all be watchful. Once the line of communication breaks, I don't like it, it's it's it, it's it's all gone. So also with God. Once the line of communication breaks, then what do we get with nothing? Even though we are Christians, we have the potential of receiving from Him. But that does not mean God will give to you. And I pray the Lord will help us. Just with God, we must always remember that we must keep that genuine relationship. Answers to prayers are born out of genuine relationship. It's not just praying in faith, saints. It's not just praying in faith. And we must work on our relationship with God. We must build our relationship with God. We must continue to build on our relationship with God. We must create time to always appear before God. We must create time to always appear before God. And as we appear before God, and I'm telling you, it must be a habit. It must be a habit. It must be a habit of appearing before God continuously. Of appearing before God. Every day. Create a time to appear before God. Let that be a challenge you want to give on ourselves. And I pray the Lord will help us. And you see, as we build that solid relationship, the relationship that goes, that is out of being in church or, or or prayer meetings or, 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 or Sunday school, that personal relationship where no one exists, just between you and your maker. I'm telling you, it ties everything in. And I pray the Lord will help us. I pray the Lord will grant us more grace. I pray the Lord will from henceforth begin to give us the grace so that we can walk with him more and give ourselves to him more. Father, I will bless your holy name. Lord, I pray that you will use this message to bring about redirection to each and every one of us so that we can begin to continue to appear before you the more. Thank you, our Father and our Savior. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.